大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王。Today there was a live debate between CGTN's Liu Xin and Fox Business's Tracy Regan about China trade. It was much hyped, especially here in China. But how did it go? How did it really go? 火锅大王。If you're familiar with debate techniques, primetime network programs in America, and Chinese politics, then you'll have a good idea of how this debate went. But without a cultural understanding of Americans, you may have missed some of the nuance. Liu Xin is a senior host and journalist here in China at a TV station called CGTN. CGTN is basically a state-run English-language TV station here in China. Trish Regan is an author and host in America. On the Fox Business Network, a Murdoch family-run TV station, the on-air debate grew out of earlier back and forth, and definitely hinted at misunderstandings between cultures. Liu Xin essentially called out Trisha's program for being inflammatory when talking about China and the trade war. And today, they finally got a chance to meet each other on air. Let's see what happened. She's the host of a primetime English-language television program overseen by the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. See how her eyes light up when she says the word communist? She knows how her viewers will think. She knows that communism is one of the boogeymen that Fox goes after every week. She knows exactly how Liu Xin will be perceived. All she needs to do is frame the conversation in a particular way. Let's see if you can spot how she does it. I know. She and I may not agree on everything. An opportunity to hear a very different view. Now, as these trade negotiations stall out, it's helpful to know how the Chinese Communist Party is thinking about trade. So here she's smiling and remarking matter-of-factly that they likely won't agree on everything, but that this is a unique opportunity to hear a different view. And before her viewers can wonder why they would want to hear any different views, she loudly emphasizes the words "trade negotiations" to remind them of why. What she's signaling to her viewers is that even though these people might be our enemy at some level, we need to talk to them because of trade negotiations. That's the message. Now, in the interest of transparency, I should explain that I don't speak for anyone but myself as the host of a Fox Business show. My guest, however, is part of the CCP, and that's fine. As I said. I welcome different perspectives on this show. But it's this next part that really makes obvious the agenda here. She says, in the interest of transparency, that she only speaks for herself as a host of a Fox Business Network show. And then she says these three magic words: "My guest, however, is part of the CCP." Then assures that's fine, and that she welcomes different perspectives on this show. "My guest, however, is a magic combination of words." Let me show you how it works. Imagine I was a host and I said the following: I don't hate puppies. My guest, however, is a member of a pro cat club called Cat Life. That's fine. I welcome different perspectives on this show. See what I did there? I just told you that my guest hates puppies without directly saying it. Trish just told us that she is transparent because she works for the Murdoch family, but Liu Xin is not transparent because she's. Part of the CCP, she's saying that Liu Xin will lie to us because she's part of the Chinese government. That's her message. The attack has already begun. Let's see how Liu Xin begins. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Trish, for having me. It's a great opportunity for me. Unprecedented. I never dreamed that I would have this kind kind of opportunity to speak to you and to speak to many audiences in ordinary households in in the United States. Okay, this is embarrassing. I see this a lot with people who don't interact with Americans very much. Liu Xin is talking to Trish as if Trish were a Chinese lady. She started this discussion the way that makes sense in China, formally humbling oneself and making a big deal about the other entity being great. You know, I'm really happy to be here. You're amazing, etc. This is absolutely normal, respectful, and appropriate in China. The problem is Fox isn't broadcasting to China; it's broadcasting to America. And the message Liu Xin just sent out, especially after the attack intro from Trish, is not going to have the effect that she thinks it will. The message she just sent out roughly translates to this: I am undeserving of this conversation because I am not important or qualified enough to be having it. You are much better than me, and I would not be here except you want me to be. Sounds extreme, but honestly, a lot of that message is being transmitted unwittingly. Definitely a bad, bad start. 
She should have just started immediately with, thanks Trish, nice to be here, listen, blah, 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 blah. I am not a member of the Communist Party of China. Please don't assume that I'm a member and I don't speak for the Communist Party of China and I'm here for network. today. I'm only speaking for myself okay. as Liu Xin, a journalist working for CGTN. Then Liu Xin says that she's not a member of the Communist Party of China. This is a fairly important point, but since she's a bit unaware of how Americans by and large think about the CCP, she doesn't stress it enough. What she doesn't realize is that almost no Americans know that being a member of a communist party is different than being a citizen of a communist country. So what she said to some people will just sound like she's lying right off the bat. So a certain percent of people will already assume that just as Trish said, she's here to lie. What she should have done in my opinion is explicitly spell out the difference. Something like, well, Trish, as you should know, just because I live in China doesn't make me a member of a political party. And the fact is I'm not a member of the CCP, so I have no idea who's doing your fact checking. If she wanted to be particularly fiery, she could have added a, did you prepare for this debate? <laughs> Give me your current assessment of where we are on these trade talks. I don't know. I, I don't have any insider information. The Chinese government has made its position very clear that uh, unless the United States treat the Chinese um, government, treat the Chinese negotiating team. Now Trish asks about the trade negotiations. This part is psychologically interesting. Liu Xin seems to be slightly stuck on trying to prove that she's not just a mouthpiece for the CCP. And so she gives the attitude of, I don't know, why would I know? The answer she gave is okay, but she should have been more knowledgeable at this point. Also, if you say, I don't have any insider information, it's inviting people to assume that you are an insider after all. You are in the CCP, especially since you were accused of being a liar before you even started talking. But all in all, her answer was fine. But it's Trisha's response that is just hilarious to me. Trade wars are never good. <laughs> okay. Good contribution. So far, there hasn't really been a debate, just Trish painting Liu Xin as a liar and Liu Xin seeming naive. So, so far, it looks like Trish is going to nail this thing. There's a lot of rhetoric out there. Yes, Fox, there is. Let's hear some of that rhetoric. Let me turn to one of the biggest issues, and that's intellectual property rights. How do American businesses operate in China if they're at risk for having their property, their ideas, their hard work stolen? The basic answer to this, in my words, is, well, I guess you'd have to ask the thousands of companies that are profiting their asses off already all over the country. How about we go over there to that Starbucks and we can talk about it. You know, the one past the Walmart over there near the Sam's Club, past the Apple store. It's on the street with the Hooters and the 500 other random Western companies. So let's see what Liu Xin says. Well, I think, Trish, uh, you have to ask American businesses whether they find coming to China and, and cooperating with Chinese businesses has not been uh, profitable. Right, so she says more or less the politically correct version of what I just said. If it sucks so bad for companies to be here in China, why are they flocking over here and making a ton of money? It actually kind of sounds like a similar argument people on Fox make when they say, if America's so bad, why do immigrants want to come to it? So then Liu Xin gives a very long answer that basically tries to explain that China has a problem with IP theft and so does America. Actually, this is one of her best points and it is delivered very well. She delivers it in good faith. Liu Xin is clearly trying to have a discussion or friendly debate about these issues. But Trisha's reply to this very clearly shows you her intentions. Liu Xin pointed out that making broad statements about China being a nation of thieves is not helpful. Because I think this kind of blanket statement is really not helpful, really not helpful. Well, it's not just a statement, it's, it's multiple reports, including evidence from the WTO. But let me ask you about Huawei. And then Trisha's reply to that is to say that it's not just a statement, because there are multiple reports and data sets. She's just exposed her desperation by intentionally strawmanning Liu Xin's argument and then defeating her own straw man. Liu Xin's point is not that it's a statement which has no basis. She just told you it has basis. Her point that you clearly understand but choose to ignore is that you can't paint Chinese people as thieves because some Chinese companies have stolen things just as you can't paint Americans as thieves in the same light. And here Trish throws this out. China passed a law in 2017 requiring tech companies to work with the military and the government. What she of course doesn't mention is that this has been the case in the U.S. for decades. 
Trish then asks if Huawei was allowed into America, could America take all their advanced technologies? How would that be? What if we said, Huawei, come on in. But here's the deal. You must share all those incredible technological advances that you've been working on. You gotta share it with us. Trish screwed up by saying incredible technological advances because it exposes part of the real issue. Huawei now has technology that America doesn't. And that's really, really scary to some people. Liu Xin doesn't seem to even notice that Trish is giving a how would you like if we stole your technology question. Instead, she takes the question at face value and answers honestly. If you pay for the use of this IP, of this high technology, I think it's absolutely fine. By this point, I'm starting to believe that Liu Xin is not acting in her innocence. I think that she thinks Trish is interested in an actual dialogue. It's really sad to see someone actually trying to talk about an issue with someone who is just such a sneaky snake. I learned English because I had American teachers. I still uh, learn how to do journalism because I have American uh, copy editors or editors. Her answer here is not great. This may be due to being under pressure and speaking in English, but what she's technically saying here in American minds is that she's still learning journalism. She's coming off like an intern here. Again, this is due to a cultural difference. She's trying to push this message of cooperation in a way that makes sense to Chinese people. But a lot of Americans view this kind of appeal to cooperation as a sneaky way to gain control or gain the upper hand. At what point will China decide to abandon its developing nation status and well, stop borrowing from the World Bank? You said it in your program as well, China grow up. Well, I think we want to grow up. We don't want to be you know, dwarfed or, or poor or underdeveloped all the time. We're giving out donations and human, humanitarian aids and all of that because we know we have to grow up. And, and Trish, thank you for that uh, reminder. <laughs> so this is a very interesting answer. She also mentioned some metrics about why China is still a developing country, but it's this part that's really interesting to me because it shows Liu Xin's personality. She is thanking Trish for her attack against China. She's trying to be so polite here that she actually does come off as being a genuinely good person. I think this was a great answer and it would be very well received by Americans. She just seems really nice and genuine. Trish asks about making sweeping changes to all the tariffs and Liu Xin basically says it would need to be done properly, but yeah. This is the thing, if you want to change the rules, it has to be done in mutual consensus. This is a professional and well thought out reply. This single little statement really nails the argument from China's side. Sure, we can change things, but it needs to be a mutually beneficial change. It can't be an unfair treaty. Then Trish brings up the trade agreement of 1974. You, know, you can go back to the trade agreement of 1974. There's a rule that enables the United States to use tariffs this, of course, is just one of those points that they gave her in case Liu Xin claimed that the U.S. was violating the laws. But she didn't say that, so Trish just sort of randomly mentions it. No one is saying the U.S. is breaking the law, Trish. They're saying that if the U.S. wants to make a trade change, it should do so through negotiations and diplomacy, not by starting a trade war. Then Trish goes into the realm of, let's explore what's different and bad about China, and asks about state-run capitalism. We, we would like to define a socialism with Chinese characteristics where market forces are expected to play the deciding role in the allocation of resources. We want it to be a market economy, but there are some Chinese characteristics, for instance, uh, some state-owned enterprises which are um, playing um, uh, an important but increasingly smaller role, maybe, in the economy. And this is actually another great answer from Liu Xin except for the strange way she inserted the word maybe into what she was saying. In English, it made her sound unsure of herself. But the substance of what she said was very good. The more aggressive answer to this question is how I normally go. Yes, a capitalist system which has government over it is different than America. In America, the corporations run the government while claiming that the government is a safeguard for corporations. In China, the government has tighter control in the market but guides the market based on capitalist principles. So for example, if the country needs to have more tech companies to compete internationally, the government will incentivize the tech sector. As much as Trish is trying to make the Chinese system out to be so different than America's, it's actually not that different. You start a company and you decide what to do with it, what you sell, who you hire, etc. Yes, there's a government presence. 
No, it's not a dystopia where you have no options. In short, it's socialism. You know, the thing that the American left is pushing for, it's that. Well, I think you need to probably keep being open. I think that that's the direction to pursue. Here, Trish is giving advice as if Liu Xin is literally China herself. It's kind of strange and condescending hearing someone try to give China advice about how to do better economically since they have outperformed every country everywhere ever. But anyway. Then Trish ends the program in a very hilarious way. Listen to these last words. No one wants a trade war, but we have to think long and hard about the right next steps. What does that even mean? <laughs> no one wants a trade war? Okay, then end the trade war. I mean, Trump is the one starting it, and this program is making it seem like China or Liu Xin herself is the cause of it all. If you don't want the trade war, then end the trade war. So then she does a recap with Michael Pillsbury about the debate. Let's take a look at what he has to say. She mentioned she's not a, a card-carrying member of the CCP, the, the Communist Party of China, but uh, you can't really operate as a television network there. Am I right? If, if you're not subscribing to party belief? Yes. I don't want to say she'd be arrested immediately, but she's very discreet. I thought she very much sticks to the line of the Chinese Communist government. Okay, so now we see what happens when there's confusion about the difference between the CCP and Chinese citizens. These guys think everyone in China is the same, apparently. Look, people, it's not that hard to understand. In China, you can't have a broadcasting TV station without a license, just like in America. I have no idea how CGTN specifically works, but let me share with you about how the Global Times works. I was interviewed by the Global Times, which is also state-owned media. Here's what that experience was like. They met with me and found out if I was interested in having a conversation on the record. I agreed, and then we met at their offices. They filmed me and asked me several questions. They gave me the draft version of the article for me to review what I had said. They allowed me to correct if any translations were off or if I wanted to adjust anything I had said for meaning. Then they published the final version. No one anywhere told me what I should say or what I had to say. There's no bulletin board with the party line written on it. It just so happens that I agree with a lot of what Liu Xin said too. I'm not a member of any communist groups at all. So what is that, a massive coincidence? How about the crazy idea that maybe, just maybe her points are actually valid and should be debated and considered? Or is that too hard for you? Is it easier to just dismiss them as scary 1950s communist propaganda? I thought one very good thing was when you kept calling her Xin. Xin means happy in Chinese. Xin means happy in Chinese. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, kinda like how Pillsbury means a white pasty bald guy. She's willing to concede that there's room for these negotiations. She's willing to concede. Isn't it the Chinese government saying that there needs to be negotiations and the American government is the one who suddenly abandoned negotiations and started a trade war? What are you talking about? And just to rub it in our faces how little she knows about China, Trish gives us this little cringe clip. There's been a lot of criticism. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a good thing I can't read Mandarin. No one can read Mandarin, Trish, given that it's a spoken dialect. Did you mean to say you can't read Chinese? Anyway, this debate wasn't very emotional or wild, but it was fascinating for me to watch. I love seeing people struggle to communicate through the cultural barrier between America and China. It gives me something to fight for. I want to break that barrier down. All in all, I'd say Trish had worse intentions and didn't seem to present any facts at all, while Liu Xin seemed quite a nice person and did present some facts. My feeling from this was that I would never want to talk to Trish about anything ever, and I would totally hang out with Liu Xin. I mean, one of them has seemed kind of evil, and the other one seemed pretty nice. This whole narrative about America being some victim is really a dead end. Negotiate for a better deal. Don't cry about it. Thanks, everybody. See ya.